You want to support Roller March Unfiltered? Be sure to join our Bring the Funk fan club. Every dollar that you give to us supports our daily digital show. There's only one daily digital show out here that keeps it black and keep it real as Roller Martin Unfiltered. Support the Roller Martin Unfiltered daily digital show by going to RollerMartinUnfiltered.com. You can make this possible. All right, folks. Uh, in 1995, an Arkansas jury convicted a sentence a black man to death for the murder of his white neighbor, Liddell Lee, who maintained his innocence all along was executed in 2017. Now, four years after his execution, a new test requested by the ACLU and the Innocence Project proves that Lee's DNA was not on the evidence a wooden club or a bloody shirt found at the crime scene. The test results found DNA of an unknown male and fingerprints that did not match Lee's. Now, during the trial, prosecutors relied on eyewitness testimony from Reese's neighbors who said they saw Lee walking around the neighborhood the morning of the murder. Lee and his attorneys filed multiple appeals and requested to have DNA analysis conducted on blood and hair recovered from the scene, but were unsuccessful. The state denied the ACLU and Innocence Project's request for a DNA test days before Lee's execution. Arkansas Attorney General Leslie Rutledge released the following statement about the DNA results. The courts consistently rejected Liddell Lee's frivolous claims because the evidence demonstrated beyond any shadow of a doubt that he murdered Deborah Reese by beating her to death inside her home with a tire thumper. After 20 years, I am prayerful that Deborah's family has had closure following his lawful execution in 2017. Let's go to my panel, Ben Dixon, host of the Benjamin Dixon Show podcast, Keller Bethea, communication strategist, Mustafa Santiago Ali, a former senior advisor for the Environmental Justice EPA. Benjamin, I want to start with you. That statement from the Attorney General says nothing about the DNA test. In fact, what the Attorney General is doing is basically saying, oh, the evidence that was presented, but they relied on eyewitness testimony. How in the hell do you not reference or speak to the results of the DNA test? It's very simple. The evidence contradicts their position, and they have to protect their power and their position by any means necessary. And so now that the DNA, the science, actually says that he was nowhere near that scene, or at least he was nowhere near that evidence that they put and presented in court. They are willing to deny that, ignore that, do whatever they have to do, because it is far more important that they maintain the fact that they convicted and executed an innocent black man. It is disgusting to the highest degree. Uh, the, the thing here uh, that makes no sense, uh, uh, Kelly, uh, is again, for the for the state to act as if this new evidence, this new information is irrelevant, uh, is absolutely crazy. I mean, at some point, they owe it to the citizens of the state to ensure that if the right person was executed, that you don't leave any doubt. This DNA test leaves doubt. It leaves doubt, but it also erases any type of 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 confidence in that system in in that uh, office which is probably why they didn't mention the dna test because they know they're skating on thin ice when it comes to the confidence uh that they have with the public especially with this coming out um it is not crazy to me that they didn't mention it it anything it is expected as stated by benjamin earlier about how they just really need to preserve their image um for those who do not want the system to change uh as it appears this da uh it acts like uh meaning you know the the reform of criminal justice system the the push for more transparency etc it doesn't seem that she is you know in line with that and for those people they are skating on thin ice with the country in terms of their confidence, uh, our confidence in them, in terms of them keeping their jobs all together. Uh, we're not playing business as usual anymore because we are slowly but surely coming to the realization that Black Lives Matter. And this is a perfect example of, of that mentality coming to light in that 
people are going to be upset about this. He, heads are going to roll because of this. This is not going to be swept under the rug. Something is going to change because of this huge mistake, and they don't want to acknowledge that, so they're just going to, you know, just just cover it up as much as they can. I'm reading from a story here, uh, Mustafa, uh, and this is what the this is what the story says. They says the Innocence Project in ACLU said five of the six hairs tested for mitochondrial DNA excluded Lee as the source. Lee could not be, quote, excluded, excluded as a potential source in one of the hairs. Quote, mitochondrial DNA testing analyzes DNA shared by all individuals in a common maternal line, including distant relatives. It can be used to exclude known individuals as the source but cannot be the basis for absolute identification or individualization. This is according to the press release put out by the ACLU, the Innocence Project. Now, this is this is also important uh, uh, to state as well. Uh, according to uh, the testing, again, the DNA of the unknown male was found on the wooden club uh, that was reportedly the murder weapon. Quote, the testing, it said that the testing concluded there is, quote, moderate support that blood on Lee's left shoe could belong to Reese. And so it, it so again, this, this DNA testing was not a full exoneration, uh, but it still raises uh, troubling issues that uh, before executing him, there were efforts to actually test the DNA. Arkansas kept denying that. This to me, I think is a huge deal when it comes to how do we move forward? I just simply believe that, one, if these folks are not going to outlaw the death penalty, then you should make sure you should test every possible thing. And if there's DNA to test, you test it. Exactly. You know, we continue to see the whitewashing that exists inside of the criminal justice system, especially when it comes to people of color, where they will exclude evidence sometimes or they will not go to the full extent of the testing that's necessary to find out uh, whom may have actually been a part of this murder or of other types of cases. And the other part of this that we should really point out is that since this brother did not do this, then somebody is walking around who's a murderer. Mm. So they should be equally as concerned with the fact that they didn't do their job because they did not do their job. Other people may have already lost their lives or people may lose their lives because of an individual who actually has committed murder before is still on the street. Oh, and again, I, I just I just want to be real clear here uh, that uh, that what they tested does not completely exonerate. The problem is uh, his DNA was not found on the murder weapon, but they did say there was moderate support that blood on his left shoe could have come from the woman. Uh, who have been bludgeoned to death. But again, this is one of those in instances where you should be, you should abs be absolutely sure. And this also, I believe, uh, Benjamin, is going to give uh, a lot of credence uh, uh, to people who believe uh, that we should not have the death penalty, uh, that because mistakes could very well happen, uh, depending upon eyewitness testimony in this case here, that the ability, that, that the, op the opportunity for the state, depending upon the, the jurisdiction, to put somebody to death who didn't do it is real. And we know for yeah. a fact, I mean, I, look, I'm born and raised in Texas, and Clarence Brantley came close to being put to death several times, at least three different times, for a murder that he did not commit, and he was later freed. There are at least three reasons why the death penalty should be abolished, Roland, based on everything that you're saying. Number one, the inaccuracy, the, the fact that this country has put people to death who absolutely were innocent. Number two, because we see that often intersects with your race. If you're a black person in this country, you are far more likely to be executed in the, under the circumstances that we're talking about. And last but not least, the United States, there's no person, state, there's no system in this country that has the moral authority to be taking anyone else's life. That is something that is should not be in the purview of this government. And we see whenever they have that opportunity, there is a level of desire, of rage, bloodlust, that they want to execute people in this country, and we are the last people who should have that moral standing as a nation. 
One day before his death, um, this is what Liddell Lee uh, told the BBC, uh, Kelly, quote, my dying words will always be as it has been. I am an innocent man. Now, this is part of the statement. Uh, this is Nina Morrison, who is the senior litigation counsel at the Innocence Project. This is what she said, quote, while the results obtained 29 years after the evidence was collected proved to be incomplete and partial, it is notable that there are now new DNA profiles that were not available during the trial or post-conviction proceedings in Mr. Lee's case. We're hopeful that one or more of these forensic law enforcement databases will generate additional information in the future. That's an important point because the, the science has changed. Uh, there have been dramatic leaps in uh, the science and testing, and you, they are far more certain with DNA testing today than they were five years ago, definitely 25 years ago. You're absolutely right about that. This is why having the death penalty on the books now in any state, in any jurisdiction, just does not make sense because the whole premise is that the death penalty is like the pinnacle of punishment, meaning that you exhausted all options and went through every single facet uh, imaginable before this person is put to death. This is not the case with uh, this man who uh, just died. It's not the case with a lot of, of recent decedents of, uh, as a result of the death penalty. And it's also, I also have to say that black men, black people in general, are disproportionately sentenced to death. Um, so that's also something to consider when you talk about the death penalty, the fact that we are, as a people, being murdered by the state and every option to exonerate us, to really prove beyond a reasonable doubt that Black men, prisoners in general, did not do this, that they're not being used. And it makes you question exactly why, I mean, rhetorically, it makes you question why they won't exhaust the resources necessary to make sure that Black people uh, are not being put to death unnecessarily. So until, I, I don't think that the death penalty should be a thing at all, but until you have a system in which every facet, every appeal, every single thing, all the technology has been finalized in that person's uh, case until you can prove beyond a reasonable doubt, even after they're in prison, that they are completely innocent. You shouldn't have a death penalty because the stake literally is life. And that is way too high of a price for somebody to be wrong two minutes after they die. Uh, and this is also why, in so many of these cases, Mustafa, why the science is far more important than eyewitness testimony, because there are so many examples, numerous examples of how eyewitnesses could be very wrong about what they thought they, they saw or heard. Yeah, we know witnesses can be biased for a number of different reasons. That's why we need strong science. We should be anchored on the science, and we should also understand, as you said, the science continues to evolve. We need to abolish the death penalty. It's very simple. We are one of the few countries that still utilize uh, that uh, in our judicial system. Um, it is antiquated, and we no longer need it. And we should be making sure that we are moving forward in a very expeditious fashion to actually stop that from being a part uh, of our judicial system or our law enforcement system. But the problem we have in this country, again, America uh, loves to put folks to death. It's all about revenge. Uh, and that is sort of how uh, this nation operates. All right, folks, back to our Mark Uncultured video in just one moment. It's time to be smart. When we control our institutions, we win. We win. We win. This is the most important news show on television of any racial background. Y'all put two, three, four, five, ten, fifteen, twenty, thirty dollars on this and keep this going. What you've done, Roland, since this crisis came out in full bloom. Anybody watching this, tell your friends. Go back and look at the last two weeks, especially of Roland Martin Unfiltered. I mean, hell, go back and look at the last two days. You've had sitting United States senators today, Klobuchar and Harris. Whatever you have that you have, you can bring to Roland Martin Unfiltered to support it. Please do, because this information may literally save your life. Watch Roland Martin Unfiltered daily 
at 6 p.m. Eastern on YouTube, Facebook, or Periscope, or go to RolandMartinUnfiltered.com. Support the Roland Martin Unfiltered Daily Digital Show by going to RolandMartinUnfiltered.com. Our goal is to get 20,000 of our fans contributing 50 bucks each for the whole year. You can make this possible. RolandMartinUnfiltered.com.